Terry at D-Lab, and boy do I have a tech tip for you. Do you need a dummy load resistor, but you don't want to buy an MFJ or spend the big bucks and get one of those Ameritrons for like 220 bucks? Well, I'm going to show you how to build one relatively cheap using a device that you can buy for relatively nothing. Here we go. So to build your own dummy load resistor, obviously the resistor is fairly easy to get. However, the enclosure is not. You'll find that the enclosure actually costs more than the resistor. However, out on the ham market, there is a device that's relatively cheap and can be repurposed into a dummy load. What is it? Well, it's old low pass filters or TVI filters. They come in a nice metal enclosure. They already have an SO239. So if you can find some of these for say, 10 bucks, open it up, gut it out, and turn it into a very nice dummy load, okay? So they come in assorted sizes. This here is a little bencher filter. I think it's about eight inches long. This here is another one. It's a generic TBI filter, but this one is about 11 inches long. And then I've got a little uh, B&W. I believe this one is around 10 inches long. This one's an aluminum cabinet so it's a little bit lighter. Now let me show you what MFJ offers for about 60 bucks and that you can decide should I buy that or should I make my own. After you see this you probably want to make your own. Alright so here is a MFJ model 260 dry dummy load. They're okay alright for the money they're not too bad. I've already got the screws pulled out so I can show you the inner workings. So they do have a nice resistor and it's sitting on clips. Okay, now the first thing you'll notice is that this side of the resistor, which is ground, is just going to a standoff and screwed to the cabinet. Also, being an aluminum cabinet, it's kind of hard to get a good ground. But here is the most alarming feature of the dummy load. The SO239, if you look really close, you can see it's on there with pop rivets, right? So you can actually take this connector and it flexes back and forth. Take a look inside. It rocks. You get a terrible ground connection and this thing it turns into a RFI splatter box. So if you get one of these, drill this out, put in screws with lock washers and that'll probably help. All right, so to repair the MFJ, and to create my new dummy load, I'm going to use a bunch of these Dale 20 watt non-inductive resistors. I bought a pile of these off of eBay. I've been waiting for an opportunity to use them. So we're going to take this guy apart. We'll configure that one. We'll repair the MFJ and then test it. All right, so luckily this enclosure is just held together with about 3,000 screws. It could be worse though, some of these are actually pop riveted together, so you'd have to drill them all out. So anyway, let's get the screws out of this baby. Now, remember, you're seeing it when I'm seeing it. I really don't know what I'm up against, but I'm assuming there's just some caps and coils and things that I can carve out. I'll end up with the SO239s soldering my resistoroid. And the other SO239 has to leave, right? We'll just cap that because I don't want to connect to the wrong end of the dummy load. All right, let's get her apart. I'm just going to carve these components out. I have no intention of keeping them around. Then I'm going to remove this plate. I'm going to drill a hole over here and over here for the terminals of the resistor to come out through. I probably may So I've got everything gutted. But I do have this brass plate that's in my way, so I need to break these solder connections and get it out of there. And there's only one way that could happen, guys. And I believe that would probably be, that's right, Snozoramus. Sit back, relax, light up an old ghoul. A lot of people wonder where ghouls come from. Lift that brass right up from all over. with snarls yeah. around us. A lot of ghouls come from Portugal. <laughs> so I took the screws out, 
to get these SO239s out of my way and these end caps popped right off. So now it'd be real easy for me to drill the holes for the terminals of the resistors to pass through. So to allow plenty of clearance for those resistor terminals, I'm punching inch holes using a Greenlee chassis punch. Okay? I won't have to worry about those terminals hitting that chassis, will I? And, in case you guys are wondering what the CD of the day is, it's Joe Jackson's new CD called The Fool. You need to check it out. Good stuff. So I decided to go ahead and repair the MFJ unit, just make it a low power test dummy load for a little transmitter, say like a Heath HW16 or a Johnson Navigator. So what I did is I installed three 150 ohm Dale non-inductive resistors in parallel to give me 50 ohms at approximately 60 watts. I also removed that junk SO239 connector that was pop riveted in. I put in a standard SO239 with four mounting screws. So she's nice and secure. Well, here's the high power dummy load complete. Built in the low pass filter case that I showed you earlier. There's the model number in case you want to find one of these and use this cabinet. So what I did is I used the same 150 ohm resistors. These are 20 watt Dale non-inductive resistors, okay? So you've got 300 here, 300 here, 300 here, and then they're wired in parallel, which gives me 100 ohms, okay? And then there's six more below that are also in series parallel, and that goes up through that hole, and they join together at the SO239 jack, so I end up with 50 ohms at approximately 120 watts of power dissipation. All right, so I'll pop this baby back together. Get all the screws in. And I've got a transmitter sitting here. So we'll actually apply some power to this thing. See if it goes up in a ball of smoke. For those of you that like to see schematics, this is the diagram for the large dummy load. So all 12 resistors are the Dale 150 ohm 20 watts. These are wired in series and then all the series resistors are in parallel to give you an effective load of 50 ohms, right? That's what we're looking for for an RF dummy load. And that's what this one does. Now you can do the same thing. You can come up with any combination of resistors that you want to get your 50 ohm load. If you have one gigantic non-inductive 50 ohm resistor, use that. I didn't. So I used this combination to get myself a little bit of wattage since I had that large cabinet. And then of course the MFJ, it only has three of the 150 ohms in parallel to give me the 50. And of course he's much lower power. Either way, you get the idea. Real quick, let's go ahead and check the resistance of the dummy loads. So there's the big guy, 49.1. And here's the rebuilt MFJ, 49.5. So they look good, no shorts. Let's hook them up to a transmitter. So let's apply some RF to these little dummy loads through the Drake watt meter. I've got this T60 transmitter which I recently repaired, puts out about 45, 50 watts or so on CW. So that's what we're in. Got my key. There we go. Getting about 45 watts. We'll check the reverse power. Of course, every dummy load has some reverse standing wave. You know, it's just the way it is, but not excessive. Got about five watts, it looks like. So that's cool. Let's switch over to the big dummy load and see how that one performs. All right, we're connected to the large dummy load now. Same deal, about 45 watts. Check reverse power. And looks like it's a little bit lower than the MFJ, maybe about four watts of reverse power. 
Now keep in mind that could have something to do with my coax leads, you know, connection integrity of the connectors themselves. But all in all, these dummy loads are working fine. Well, so there you have it. A very cost-effective way of building a dummy load out of a worthless low-pass filter. You can find these things out there on the used market for about 10 bucks. I think I also paid about 10 bucks for those resistors. So what a great way to save yourself about $200 on a dummy load. And you get to build it yourself. And that's what ham radio is all about. Hope you enjoyed the tech tip. We'll see you again.